we're going to start today with a story. Um, it's 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 not a happy story, but it's a story that gives one resolve. You know what we talk about on this show? We don't just sit back and let things happen to us. We respond, but also we make sure that there are changes that are made to ensure these things don't continue to happen over and over and over again. Today, we are honored to have Tiffany Rishal. I hope I said that right. If I said it wrong, please correct me. Uh, we are here to discuss uh, her story about her son. It's a sad story, but in, uh, in his mother's strength, changes are going to be made. But anyway, good morning, Tiffany. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate this. Well, look, before we get started, I, I, I like things to be personalized. Tell us a little bit about Jalen. Um, as you know, my son um, was murdered last year, April the 27th, uh, 2022. Um, it was during the daytime and Jalen was, he, they were going into the neighborhood to serve a warrant to Jalen, uh, as he got entered into his vehicle, um, they basically, um, uh, followed him when they followed him, they, uh, I guess they went probably maybe about um, two minutes down the road and then the undercover police came after them. Um, the guy that was driving the car put on his emergency lights and he drove maybe about 20 miles per hour to uh, get to safe haven. Um, <clears throat> once he... Um, got on a certain street. I think it was Josie street. They did a H uh, Houston police department did a pit maneuver. Um, at the, at the, at the beginning of the, the, uh, pursuit, they, the officer said he will not live to leave the neighborhood. This is the statement. That okay. Let's made. stop. Let me stop you right there. Let me stop you right there on the, on the officer's cam. His, in his own voice, he said, your son will not live to see the end of the day. Yeah, he basically said he will not live, leave the neighborhood. Okay, got it. And once he um, made that statement, he was, I guess he was getting ready to do whatever in the car. And they did the pit maneuver, turned Jalen them around, which were facing Officer Shane Privet. The vehicle Shane Privy was in. Um, Shane Privy was on the passenger side of the uh, the undercover police car, and Jalen was on the passenger side of the car that he was in, which was a black SUV. Jalen got out the car. The police got out the car, which is Officer uh, Privy. Um, Officer Privet said, put your hands before hands got out of his mouth. He shot Jalen. Um, after he shot him, he said, oh, shit. Jalen falls to the ground. Uh, he was struck in the side of the neck. He fell to the ground. They handcuffed him and then they dragged him. Um, this is pretty much. What do you mean you know, by then they dragged him? They, they handcuffed him and dragged him across the, the concrete. The after, after being sh after being shot and after he'd fallen to the floor, correct, bleeding, bleeding correct. out, and they handcuffed him first. Okay, they handcuffed him first and then they dragged him. So this is pretty much. Um, I feel as though first aid should have been um, done on Jalen, but. I didn't see it happening. They act like they want to know where he got shot at and put some bandage on it. <sighs> I'm sorry, y'all. I, I'm no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm sorry you went through this. What gets me is, um, it, it brings back all the memories of 
these types of sh- I'm sorry. I I'm with you. It, it 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 brings back the memories of how some bodies are in fact treated by police officers. Um but what you did, and this is this is the thing that makes us want why I wanted to have you here. This happens in this country over and over again. And if we didn't have uh, advocates like you, in, in, the, in this case, the mother, advocates like you, uh, we wouldn't be able to make the changes. And you came out uh, when we had a rally uh, with regards to our district attorney, uh, who pretty much got the officer no build. Correct. You were strong to come and tell the story. The thing about it is nobody, one, deserves to be uh, indiscriminately shot. And number two, nobody deserved to be treated the way they did after being shot. We're all humans. Um, so what did you do after that? Um Basically, you know, we we did a lot of protesting in around the Houston area. Um, several of the groups came along to join us out of different uh, cities. We feel like we haven't gotten the support in Houston, Texas to kind of, um, you know, maneuver this around. So we had to, like, uh, deal with other activists in other cities. Uh, Black Lives Matter grassroots. Um, we had the BLM from Houston uh, grassroots also joined us, and it's, it's it's a few other groups that joined us as well as we protest. And the first place we went was to Kim Ogg's office, um, where we protest one one uh, Saturday. Where it was on a Friday. Excuse me. We protest on a on a Friday uh, morning, and um, she stopped the protest by uh, asking us to join in a meeting to let us know the process and the procedures of how it works. So at that particular time, we went up there and we listened to everything that everybody had to say, and the one thing that I I uh, made plain to everybody. It came out of his mouth. He will not live to leave the neighborhood was enough for me. Um, At this particular time, we did not see the cam, but knowing that he said he will not live to leave the neighborhood was enough for me because that's premeditated to me. Uh, I don't know about to anybody else, but he basically said what he was going to do. Uh, in that message, um, in the time that they went to court with uh, to the grand jury, uh, Kimberly uh, Carter, uh, I'm sorry, Kimberly Clark made it plain to me that's not what he meant when he said that. And nobody knows what he meant, what he said, but him. So, of course, you know, th- to save his butt, he's going to make... Who is Kimberly Clark? Kimberly Clark is a, a one of the civil rights attorney for the district uh, for the district attorney. So beforehand, she comes in to defend his statement saying he doesn't... That's not what he meant. Right. Okay, right. go ahead. So with that being said, that's one of the things that I wanted to point out that he said exactly what he was going to do. He didn't, my son did not live, uh, leave the neighborhood. And was he alive? You know, uh, he left it, but he didn't leave, you know, breathing. Um, they said, he. but, he, but let, 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 let's be clear because, you know, in any other, in any other, th- for any other normal person, you make a statement and a few seconds later, the, the statement you made about that person, that person is dead. I think that's probative. 
I, I am it. So I don't think you are uh, at all out of scope when you say, well, it seems to me like we understand what he meant because what he said got executed. Now, Kim Og and, the, and their administration, they tried to tame you guys by or, or, or quiet you guys by saying we're going to go through procedures. And you all did attempt to go through procedures. Do I have that right? Yes, we did go up there um, and we talked along with my my um, my lawyer's assistant. We all went up there and we we discussed the policies, the procedures that how long it may take, uh, uh, what we have to go through and all those things that that's fine. But, you know. Why does it have to go to a grand jury? She could have made the decision to file charges right then and there. Well, let me let me just be clear here. And I think you know this as well as I do. Ask uh, Michael Brown, ask, uh, ask the, the couple of guys in Minnesota who the cop shot, the, the cop shot after asking them to, to give them their license. We could we could go. You know, I've blogged statement after statement. There are certain bodies in this country. I and P, unless people start to admit that, it'll continue. But luckily, you got Benjamin Crump, who will ensure, like he has in many other jurisdictions, that these guys pretty much, whether they do it through the uh, criminal process or the civil process, mm-hmm. they'll it'll be taken care of. Now, um. The one thing I should have said, your son, your son didn't display a gun, showed a gun, had the implication of having a gun or anything when he got out of that car. Is that correct? No, he didn't have a gun. Uh, he didn't show any kind of gun or anything, or he did not even go towards the police. Um, we don't even know what he was going to do. Everybody think that he was going to run. Um, however, we don't know what he was going to do because it was done within less than Immediate three seconds. seconds. Right. So we don't and know that, exactly. And that is on the, and that three seconds is on the tape that yes. you can see. Officer gets out of car, officer points gun, officer shoots. Correct. Um, you know, before we continue, Tiffany, I've always said I, uh, I I work hard. I do all that I'm supposed to do. I do all the right things. I'm saying this about me right now. There's nothing that I should fear. But anytime there is a cop behind me, every time I see an officer. My fear is, is he having a good day or not? Because somehow certain bodies are generally the victims. And if there are any officers listening after I'm I'm done speaking to uh, Tiffany, I would love to for you to call in because there there are certain things we would like to, um, to ask civilly, of course, of you. But anyway, Tiffany, so uh, now Og then took it to the grand jury. There's a state, there's a saying that, that uh, saying that people say all the time. And that is a district attorney could indict a ham sandwich if they so desire. This was taken to the grand jury and what occurred? Uh, the first time that it was taken to a grand jury, um, it was no action. Uh, right around July, some right around in July, and then um, uh, in October on the sixteenth, they started the um, the grand jury again with the case. Um, and mind you, that uh, Jalen was in a vehicle with one of his friends, which was one of the witness that did go into the grand jury. Um, they basically said that Jalen reached down into the car at some point. Well, we didn't see that part um, that he reached down. So I'm not understanding uh, if he reached down. Let me let me see that part uh, to where he reached down into the car. And the police claim, which Officer Privy claimed that he thought he saw a black object. 
uh, Jalen had a black bag in on his arm. He had a black bag, which it wasn't a black bag. It was gray with black around it. Uh, and he had his shoes in his hands. So I'm not sure where the black object now, when they said that they opened the bag, they said that Jalen had a gun in the bag. I have not yet to seen that either. And I do have his items that he did have after they uh, came up with the no bill this particular time. So when you look at the items, the shoes was brown. The bag was gray with black trimming. So I'm not understanding where it comes, uh, where where his thinking or his mind says that he's seen a black object. Um, so this is the reason why they know build it because the police said that he was afraid of his life and he's seen a black object. He's seen Jalen reach back in the car and he thought it was a black object. So now we hear as a no bill and um is to me is unacceptable because it was plain uh you look at the video it was clear um it was nothing that is every time i looked at the video it's the same video and nothing that i seen different from the first time i seen the video so i'm not understanding why it wasn't uh uh, indictment uh, out of this situation. Um, the only thing that I can say that it wasn't um, it wasn't presented at at their best. Well, uh, yeah, that, that's that's there. There's uh, there's absolutely no doubt of what you just said. Like I said, a district attorney has the ability to indict a ham sandwich. That is a stain. It's it is so prevalent that. It is a it's a known fact. Now, the other thing is we are a, we decided as a state that we were going to be a cowboy, laissez gun carrying state. So whether your son had a gun, which he didn't, but whether he had a gun or not, this is a gun carrying state. And the officer never gave him the opportunity to say, yes, I had a gun. Yes, I don't have a gun. Same thing happened with uh, uh, the, the guy in Minnesota. The guy in Minnesota, no, not the same thing, different. The guy in Minnesota had a gun and he told the officer, I have a gun. The officer said, where is it? I tell him, he says, I give me your license. He said, may I give you my license? Yes. And as he just reached for his license, he lost his life. So I, I, I want to thank you, first of all, for the courage for what you're doing, because what we need is to have accountable DAs, not DAs that are pretty much the lawyers for police officers, but the DAs that are the, the enforcement agent for all citizens of, under which they operate. And this is definitely what you're telling me, what we don't have in Harris County, where there is a distinct bias towards officers, whether they be good or bad. And like I said, I can't, when I, my, personally, my job is to stay away from law enforcement, from the criminal justice system, because we still don't have district attorneys out there that are willing to do their job for cops that are rogue. Anything else you'd like to add before we close this segment, um, uh, Tiffany? Um, the only thing I, I'm, I'm requesting is for them to reopen my, my demands is for them to reopen this case and take it back to the grand jury. Um, I don't know if that would ever happen under the office of Kim Og, but it's, it will not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, my thing is we can't go out here as police be the, the judge, the jury and the prosecutor. And that's, you know, is a lot of things in this situation happened was a lot of red flags and it just wasn't right. The pursuit wasn't even uh, it, to me when you go into our communities, what type of solution you have, what, what are you going in to do? Um, if you going in with killing on your mind, of course, that's what's going to happen. Uh, so what are we doing in the communities to stop, uh, police from going in and killing up our young men and our young women, you know, this is, this is ridiculous. As you say, this is happening all over the world. And at some point it has to stop. Enough is enough. And I'm just not going to stop. I'm not going to, you know, I, 
Jalen's birthday was uh, December the 2nd, Saturday. So I'm so I'm still kind of trying to grasp, you know, him not being here for his birthday. Uh, he wasn't here for Thanksgiving. This this guy get to go home to his family. This guy get to go home to his kids. Well, I didn't get to have that. And, and then plus he has a seven year old daughter at the time oh he gosh. got killed was six. So, you know, Jayla has to deal with not having her father, you know, for these holidays. So for you not to uh, follow, uh, follow in and uh, indict this guy is really devastating uh, for, for me and the family. And we're not going to stop. We're going to continue to do what we need to do um, to get charges filed. We do have been to the uh, uh, just the Department of Justice. Uh, we have already filed paperwork with them and we're just going to continue because he needs to something needs to happen here. Something needs to happen. And before no. this happens to anybody else, we're going to continue to, you know, stand in the gap, you know, for those that are dealing with uh, things happening in the prison out here, things happen all over the world. We're going to stand in the gap for each other. Tiffany, you just said uh, for you and your family, let me say it's for you, your family, and for everybody else. The work that you're doing uh, uh, also matters to uh, to everybody who has any kind of encounter with police officers. And we should state this police officer, it's not like he hadn't had uh, uh, some violent incidences before. Where I think he was, uh, wasn't he indicted before for breaking somebody's socket or something like that? Yeah, in 2017, he had an incident where he went out to, um, I, I don't know exactly what it was, but it was some type of drug case. And a young man, he he pretty much handcuffed the young man and he he kicked him in the eye and messed up his socket. And uh, he was indicted for that. In 2002, 2019, Shane Privet was went uh to another grand jury where they no build the situation where they, you know, got them off. So here we are again. We're in the same place. 2022, he killed somebody. So what does it take? Well, if- what, you know, what does it take? Y'all going to wait till he kills somebody else or hurt somebody else on the street? What, what are we doing here? You know, it just don't make sense to me. It doesn't. When you get off with something, it becomes so much easier to do it again. Well, look, thank you so kindly for having been on Politics and right here at KPFT 90.1 FM Houston. Tiffany, I am I am very sorry for your loss, but I I am I am happy with your resolve to actually get something done. You have a wonderful rest of your day, my friend. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.